Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be talking all about the Park Hopper option in Walt Disney World. If you're new here, welcome. I hope that my channel will be a bright spot in your day as I share the magic of Disney, the joy of travel, a little bit about our life here and there, and helpful tips and tricks along the way. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well as that notification bell and give this video a thumbs up while you're watching. It really does help support my channel. So without further ado, let's talk about the Park Hopper option in Walt Disney World. Okay, so one of the questions I get asked most often is, is the park hopper option worth it? So I thought it would be awesome to walk you through some things to consider in making that decision for your Walt Disney World trip. Now, full disclosure, I have tried to film this video so many times and I wanted it to be perfect. I wanted to say everything just the right way. I wanted to have all of my bullet points in order and it just wasn't coming together. And so I shared this frustration with my husband and he was like, why don't you just talk to your subscribers like you would a friend or a client who is planning a trip to Walt Disney World? And that really helped put things in perspective today. So we are just going to sit down. We're going to have a little one-on-one -on -one planning session for your Walt Disney World vacation. And I am going to help you decide whether or not the park hopper option is right for your trip. So the first thing that I think is important to walk through is what is the park hopper option? In Walt Disney World, you're going to have your base ticket. This can be anywhere from one to 10 days, and that's going to give you admission into one of the four Walt Disney World theme parks per day. Those theme parks are Magic Kingdom, Epcot, Hollywood Studios, and Disney's Animal Kingdom. Now, with the Park Hopper option, if you choose to add that to your ticket, you're going to be able to visit more than one park per day. In fact, if you got a wild hair and your walking shoes, you could visit all four theme parks in a day with the park hopper option. Now, I think that there are some important things up front to know about the park hopper in deciding whether or not it's right for you. The first thing to know is that the park hopper option must be added to each day of your ticket. So for example, if you have a three day ticket, the park hopper option is going to be added to each of those three days. There is not the option to add it to just one or two of those days. The next thing that I think is important to know is that park hopping is subject to availability. What does that mean? Well, for example, let's say you go to Epcot in the morning, but you know you wanna watch the fireworks at Magic Kingdom in the evening. You can hop to Magic Kingdom with the park hopper option as long as capacity for Magic Kingdom hasn't been reached at the time that you're trying to hop. Now, before that completely scares you off of adding the park hopper option to your ticket, um, I will say that I have never seen this become an issue except for New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, and Christmas Eve, Christmas Day. So if you're traveling during those um, busy peak times or going to the parks during those peak times, you may want to take that into consideration. But otherwise, we've never really seen this be an issue um, as far as availability when park hopping. The third thing that I think is important to note is that you can only park hop after 2 p.m. So in that same example, you go to Epcot in the morning, but you you know you want to go to the Magic Kingdom in the afternoon or in the evening, you can do so starting at 2 p.m. And the last and final thing that I think is important to note is that you have to enter your reserved park first in order to park hop. Now what does that mean? So at the time of filming this video, Disney has a system in place where you have to make park pass reservations for the park that you intend to enter each day. So you'll make that reservation for Epcot in our example. Now you don't have to make a reservation at the parks you intend to hop to, you just have to make that reservation for your first park. And currently at the time of filming, you have to enter that first park before you can hop to your next one. So let's say in my example, you have a park pass reservation for Epcot in the morning and it is pouring down rain and you decide that it would probably be better for you to hang out at your resort, get to do a few things around there, and then hopefully the weather will clear up and you can go to Magic Kingdom in the afternoon slash evening. And lo and behold, the weather holds out and 
you have a beautiful afternoon and evening to go and visit Magic Kingdom. When you get to Magic Kingdom, you won't be able to enter because you didn't go and check into Epcot first. Now, before that completely scares you off, there is a way around it. You'll simply want to go in and change your park pass reservation to, in this example, Magic Kingdom or whichever park you intend to hop to. Now, again, that is subject to availability, but we really don't see that um, as an issue except for those dates that I mentioned. So it, rather than going all the way to Epcot, tapping in and then getting on a bus to head to Magic Kingdom, you can simply change your park pass reservation to Magic Kingdom. But those are kind of the rules of the road, so to speak, when it comes to park hopping. So I really like to make sure that my friends and family know that ahead of time before making that decision to add the park hopper. Now the next category that I think is important to talk about is price. Adding the park hopper option to your ticket is an additional cost. So let's break down the prices so you can decide whether or not the park hopper option fits within your budget. So at the time of filming, to add the park hopper option to a one day base ticket, it's going to be $65 per adult. For a two or three day base ticket, it's going to be $75 per adult. And for a four to 10 day base ticket, it's going to be $85 per adult. I think it's important to take a look at your travel budget and decide whether or not the park hopper option fits within that budget. And to also consider if you want that money to go towards the park hopper option, or would you rather it go towards something else like dining, souvenirs, an after hours event or a fireworks dessert party. And we're gonna talk about two other factors to consider in deciding whether or not the park hopper option is right for your trip and is the right value for your trip. All right, so the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is sit down with your travel party and write down a list of your must do's for your Walt Disney World vacation. Why is this so important? Because it is hard to do and see it all in Walt Disney World in one trip. And you don't wanna have a member of your travel party on that plane ride home or on that long drive home, sitting there thinking, man, I am disappointed I didn't get to do or see X, Y, and Z. So sit down with the members of your travel party, go through all of the different rides, attractions, parades, fireworks at each park, and write down what you absolutely cannot leave Walt Disney World without doing. Because this is going to really help you decide whether or not the park hopper option is the right value for your trip. So let me give you two examples. The first example is going to be a three-day base ticket and deciding whether or not to add the park hopper option to that ticket. And then the other one is going to be a four to 10 day base ticket and deciding whether or not the park hopper option is right for that trip. So this first trip is a three day base ticket and this is actually a real world example. And the reason it is, is because we are going on a Walt Disney World vacation here soon. And I sat down with the members of our travel party and we walked through what our must do's were for the trip. So the travel party is going to be my parents, my husband and myself, and our newly two-year-old toddler. We currently have a three-day base ticket. And when we were walking through the parks, we started with Magic Kingdom. And there was so much that I wanted to do with our toddler in Magic Kingdom. And really, there's so much for toddlers to do in Magic Kingdom. There aren't a lot of height requirements for rides. There's a ton of character interactions, parades, fireworks, things like that, that we quickly realized that we might actually want to spend two days in Magic Kingdom trying to do things with our toddler there. And the next park we looked at was Epcot. There's a few rides that he can ride, Living with the Land, Finding Nemo, Ratatouille's Adventure, things of that nature. And there's also quite a bit to do for adults, you know, walking around the World Showcase, getting in to enjoy different foods and drinks from particular countries, um, test track, um, I'm trying to think of all the different things, but we realized that there were several things that we wanted to do in Epcot. And then we moved on to Hollywood Studios. Now I know this is a little bit controversial, but when we went through whether or not there was enough for us to do in Hollywood Studios, there just wasn't enough for us to devote an entire day to that park. 
And the reason is that our son doesn't meet the higher height requirements for a lot of the rides. And I don't think he's old enough to sit through the shows just yet. So we really were considering completely eliminating that park. But the only problem with doing that is my dad is a huge Star Wars fan and really wanted to be able to experience Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. So that's when we started to decide whether or not the park hopper option was a good fit. We knew we didn't want to spend a full day in Hollywood Studios, but we could go in the morning so that my dad could experience Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, come back to our resort, let our son get a nap, and then go to Magic Kingdom or Epcot or Animal Kingdom in the afternoon or evening. So that's when we started to kind of talk about maybe the park hopper option is a good value for this trip. And then we looked at Disney's Animal Kingdom. And I think that there's a few things that my son would enjoy. It's not my parents' favorite park, but again, there's where that park hopper option and having that flexibility comes into play because we could go to Animal Kingdom in the morning, let my son ride uh, Kilimanjaro Safari, maybe Navi River Journey, walk around and take a look at the animals. And then in the afternoon or evening, again, park hop back to Magic Kingdom, for example. So that's where we really kind of walked through trying to decide whether or not the park hopper option was a good fit and a good value for our trip. We ultimately decided that we were going to just stick with the base ticket for our trip. Trip. And this was because we made our son <laughs> the focus of the trip and really doing and seeing the most that we could with him. And that's something that I'm going to talk about in the next factor <laughs> to consider section. But we really just realized that we wanted to spend two days in Magic Kingdom, one day in Epcot, and that the park hopper option just wasn't necessary for this particular trip. The next example I'm going to give you is a four day ticket. So you could visit one of the four Walt Disney World theme parks per day. So you really want to make sure that you're walking through each of those theme parks to decide if there is enough to do for your travel party to enjoy a full day in each park. Because if there is, then you don't need to invest in that park hopper option. But if like in my previous example, there's just one or two things you want to see at a particular park and then you wanna feel free to move on to a different park where there's more to see and do on your must do's or must have lists, then I think that the park hopper option could be a good value for your trip. So I hope that helps you in making that decision and we're going to move on to the last step and the last thing that you're going to want to do is determine what is your walt disney world travel style now i know that kind of sounds a little bit silly but i promise when i ask this question to my friends my family my clients it really helps me tailor their trip to their travel style and they end up having a much more magical vacation so let me ask you some of the questions that i ask those friends family and clients are you a rope drops to fireworks type Disney traveler? Do you get up before the sun comes up? You are at that park when they drop that rope and you don't leave that park until they cut the lights off. <laughs> um, or are you the type of traveler that really likes to take it easy? Like you like to have your slow mornings, maybe you do a character breakfast at one of the resorts, you head to the parks, you do a few things, you've got a toddler so you need to come back to your resort to take a nap and then you go back to the park in the evening may or may not make it to fireworks but you really just kind of are more go with the flow we'll see and do what we can or are you somewhere in between where you've got those must do's and you've absolutely want to hit every single item on your must do list but you also really want that flexibility to be able to go from park to park or are you the type of person that really wants to devote an entire day to one park and really see and do everything that that park has to offer from open to close? Do you want and need that flexibility? Are you comfortable with eliminating a park if you only have a one to three day base ticket? Do you crave that structure that comes with ha going to one park per day and really structuring your day from open to close at one park? Those are the types of questions that I ask in determining what type of 
Walt Disney World travel style my friends, family, and clients have. And I think when you determine what your travel style is, it's going to help you determine whether or not the park hopper option is right for your trip. So for example, our personal travel style used to be rope drop to fireworks, do it all, see it all, make the most of every single minute we're in Walt Disney World. And then when we had a toddler, we learned that we can make the most of our Walt Disney World vacation in a different way. We knew we needed to go at his pace, we needed to slow down, sleep in, go and do a few things, come back to the resort for a nap, go and do a few more things, and it was really just going to be a more magical vacation if we did it that way versus trying to do rope drop to fireworks. There's no right or wrong way to do Disney World. It's just what is the right way for your family and for your trip. So I hope that those questions will really help you determine whether or not the park hopper option fits into your Walt Disney World travel style. All right, that wraps up our one-on-one -on -one planning session. I hope you enjoyed it and that you'll give this video a thumbs up. I hope that the information that I provided will help you decide whether or not the park hopper option is the right fit for your trip and your travel style. Please don't forget to subscribe and stick around. I would love to have you as a member of our growing YouTube community here at Main Street Through Your Eyes. Don't forget to hit that notification bell so you know when I post additional Disney tips and tricks. And I'll see you in my next one. I hope you have a magical vacation. Bye.